Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today I'm going to be showing you how to activate Mantis Pro on your Android phone. So I did a video on this previously, and that was using a PC to activate the application, but the developers are now updated the app, and you can now use just a simple USB cable to activate the application. So what you'll need to get started is obviously a second Android phone. You'll need a USB-C to USB-C cable, or you can use a USB OTG adapter or cable. This is a bit of overkill, but it will do the job. Okay, so what you can see here is that you can now set one of your phones to be the host device and the other to be the target. So the target will be the phone that you want to have the Mantis Pro activated on, and the host will be the phone that will actually activate it for you. Okay, so to get started, you'll need to download and install Mantis Pro from the Play Store, and then you'll need to make sure that you have USB debugging turned on. So go into your phone settings, scroll down to About Phone, find the software information, and then tap on build number seven times. Enter your PIN, and we can see that developer mode has been enabled. And now we're gonna go back out of here, and we'll see this developer options menu item has been unlocked. So we're gonna go into there, we're gonna scroll down, and we're just going to enable USB debugging. Press OK, and that is enabled. So make sure you also do this on your second Android phone. I've already got this one set up. As you can see, USB debugging is enabled. So there are some additional instructions here inside the Mantis app itself. So if your phone has the option to disable permission or security settings, then you need to enable that, which will also be in the developer options menu. On Samsung phones, that doesn't exist, but on certain phones such as Realme, and others that does exist. So you'll need to make sure that that permission is also enabled. So there's also the potential that you'll need to enable OTG storage in your system settings, as you can see here. Again, this doesn't appear on a Samsung phone, but they are giving you the warning here that you may need to do it on whichever phone you're using. Okay, so both our phones are set up and ready to go. So now what we're going to do is activate one of them to start using the application. So on both phones, we're gonna click on tap to start Mantis Buddy. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to activate the one here on the left using the one here on the right. So as you can see, again, from these options here, the target is going to be the one that we're going to be playing the games on and we want to activate. So we're going to select this as the target. And our phone on the right will therefore be the host. So we're going to select this as the host. OK, so you can see these instructions that pop up as we have gone through previously. Again, there's nothing on Samsung phones that you need to change here but it is just you know, giving you some additional instructions in case you have any issues. So what I'm gonna do now is plug in the USB cable here. And you'll see on a Samsung phone, when you plug it in, you'll get the Samsung smart switch pop up. Just press back to come back out of there. And now you'll see a little message here asking if you want to allow Mantis Gamepad Pro to access Samsung Android. We're just gonna press okay on there. And then you'll see allow USB debugging pop up on the other phone. And we're gonna click allow there. So we want this phone to be the target phone and this one to be the one that activates it. So what I found on Samsung devices is that if you go into the USB settings from the pull down menu here and tap for other USB options, you can select here which phone is controlling the USB. So we're gonna to go to it on this one as well. Okay, so I'm in the USB settings now and as you can see, we're currently set up so that the phone on the right is controlling the USB connection. Now what I found is that the phone that you want to have activated is the one that needs to control the USB connection. So I'm gonna select this phone over here. So now my phone on the left is controlling the USB connection and the phone on the right is not. So I'm just gonna click back here on the Samsung smart switch, press okay. You can see that the message that appeared on the left phone is now on the right phone, I'm going to click allow to allow the USB debugging on the right. Now we're going to go back into Mantis Pro here, come back out of these menus, and then we're going to go back for the target on the left and the host on the right. So you can see here the target device has now been found and we can now press start connection. Now what I've also found is sometimes you get a little message appear down here saying done, but a lot of the time you don't, which is probably just a bug. 
but basically if you wait around 10 seconds after pressing start connection you can safely assume that the activation has completed and now we can click back here and back again and then we're going to exit by pressing the back button here and then we're going to go back into Mantis Buddy or Mantis Pro sorry and you can see it is now connected. So these are just a few bugs or glitches maybe that are happening. Potentially it's just on my phones, I'm not sure, but uh, I found that this is the way I've got it to work. So now we can see Mantis Buddy is connected and we don't have a gamepad connected, but what I'll do, just run through those steps again. And we're gonna now activate our phone on the right here. So back into the USB options here for both phones. And now because we want to activate our phone here on the right, we're gonna let this be the one that's controlling the USB connection. So you can see that has activated over here. We're gonna press okay and press allow. Go back into Mantis Buddy, Mantis Pro. And then we're gonna click start up at the top. And now the phone on the left is gonna be the host and the phone on the right is going to be the target. So this is a perfect example of sometimes the application not quite picking things up. So we can see it's not found the target device yet. So we're gonna click back here, go back into it again. It still hasn't found it, so we're gonna exit. Go back in. If it still doesn't find it, I found that you can just unplug and replug the cable. So we're gonna try doing that now. Okay, so now I'm going to try and host again, and we can now see that it has found the phone. So we're going to click Start Connection. Again, just count to 10, and basically that gives it enough time to do the activation. That should be more than enough time. So now I'm going to go back out of here, back again, I'm going to exit, load the app back up and we can now see it's activated. So we've now got both phones activated and hopefully that just shows you a, a way of getting it activated with this method with the USB cable. So like I said, it could just be these phones, it could be a bug in the software. I know this is a new feature that they've added, but it does mean now that you don't need a PC to actually activate Mantis Pro, which is great. Okay, I've just restarted my phone here on the right because I'm just gonna show you the activation with an OTG cable. In this case, I'm actually using a USB-C to USB-A and HDMI connector, but it's the same idea. If you have a USB OTG cable, it means you can basically use a USB-A to USB-C to do the activation. So I'm gonna plug that in over there and plug in the other side over here. The cable's a bit long, so I've curled it up a bit. And again, we want to activate the device on the right. So we're gonna make sure that this is connecting, uh, sorry, controlling the USB connection, which it is. So we're gonna Press back here, press OK, and then press allow. Don't forget, you can tick those boxes to remember the settings. I just wanted to make sure they appeared for this video each time, just so you were aware what was happening. So now I can go into Mantis Pro here, and on here. So we're gonna be the host on the left, and we're gonna be the target on the right. And again, we can see it's already found the connection here, so let's click start. Give it 10 seconds. And then we're going to click back here, back again, exit Mantis, head back in, and it's now activated. Okay, so you can see that works for activation. So now we're going to connect up a controller and we're just going to add a game here and set it up just for fun. Okay, so I've connected the GLAP controller up and it hasn't actually detected it in Mantis Pro yet. So I'm just going to exit out and go back in. And there we are, it's now been connected and it's been found. So I've added Genshin Impact to the list here, so I'm gonna just click on there, and it's gonna pop up saying that you need to enable floating widgets. So this is quite a simple process. You click Allow, you find Mantis Pro in the list, and then you just allow floating widgets here. So I'm gonna go back into Mantis Pro, click back, and it is now active. Okay, so we're in Genshin Impact now, and as you can see, nothing's working yet, 
but that's because we need to map the controls to the screen. So you can see the little Mantis Pro icon here, which floats around on the screen. If you tap on that, that is going to let us add various things onto the screen. So press, press the add button to start adding things. We can add the D-pad, we can add keys, left sticks and right sticks. So we're gonna add the left stick and the right stick to start with, left stick, right stick. And we can just drag them around to the exact location we want them to be. You can also adjust the size here. And if you go into the settings, you can also set the sensitivity and the ability to actually invert the axis as well, which is really nice. But for the moment, I'm just gonna add some buttons here. So add a key. I'm gonna have the A key for jump. So we're gonna stick that over here. We're gonna have a key for run, which is gonna be the B button. I'm gonna have a key for attack, which is gonna be my right trigger here. We're gonna have a key for one of our abilities here. And the other one can be the Y button there. So now we've got everything placed down here, we can go into the game and just test that it all works. So press on the Mantis Pro icon here, and we should now be able to use our sticks to look around and obviously jump and do everything that we've assigned to do. And it works as if by magic. So we're just going to the Mantis Pro icon here again. I'll just go through the other options that you have here. So we have the phases option here. So phases work best in games like PUBG or COD Mobile, where you have a battle royale mode and say a deathmatch mode, where your buttons on the screen may be slightly different layouts in each mode. So what you would do is you would create a new phase, select that phase and you can see all the icons we've got have just disappeared and you can now start adding new ones on. Now we can quickly switch back if we wanted to or we'll go to our phase two. And again, like I say, not in this game particularly, but in a game where you may need a different layout, you could therefore do that. So again, if we go to our phases, we can now switch between those two phases and quickly get the layout that we want for that game. So I'm gonna stick with phase one. Obviously, I don't need another phase in this game. The little control icon here, that shows you what active gamepads you have connected. The settings icon, you can have a setting to switch phases with a shortcut. So currently it's set to select and start. So if I press select and start, let's give it a try. We can now see phase two is active. And now phase one is active again. So that works really well. Again, that just saves you going into the menu and switching manually. You can also set how opaque the buttons are here and also the Mantis icon itself. Now, for whatever reason on mine, the buttons are still showing as completely invisible, but again, that could just be a bug on my phone, but that does allow you, as you can see, at least the icon here is now a lot less uh, dark than it was before. Okay, I just wanna recap on what we've learnt then. So don't forget that the host device is going to be the one that is going to be doing the activating on the target device that you want to play on. I've activated both in this video just for fun, but you would normally, I guess, only be playing on one phone at a time. So target is the phone that you want to play on and host is the one that's going to help activate it for you. Don't forget the USB settings as well to make sure that the host device is the one that's doing the USB controlling. Again, not all phones will have the same terminology or even the same options. So be sure to uh, just try and have a play around. It does work and it works really well. And also it's a lot more reliable than the PC one where that can become deactivated after a while. So if you don't have another Android phone that you can activate on, then you can still use the PC activation. So I've put a link to the other video that I made showing you how to activate on a PC in the description below and in the top right hand corner. So be sure to share that out if you don't have another spare Android phone lying around. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Like I say, have a play around. It took me a few attempts to get the right technique, but now I can just do it every single time without any issues at all. If this video helped you out, please click the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you want to become a member of the channel, then click on the join button and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.